Hey, fourth graders, Ms. Trammell here, back again for day five of Number Corner. Today is Wednesday, October the 7th, and we're going to begin Number Corner today by looking at our calendar grid because we need to get caught up on our calendar observation chart. Are you ready? Well, let's get started. I'm going to show you our calendar grid, which is behind me here. And notice we've already looked at the markers for October 1st, October 2nd, and October 3rd. So we're going to begin our um, discussion today by first looking at the marker for October the 4th, which was Sunday. Let's see what it looks like. So we have two dimes. I'm going to pull up our observation chart so that we can fill in the information that we need to fill in for this calendar marker. Do you remember this? Okay, well, when we filled this chart in before, we found equivalent names for our calendar marker. So I'm wondering, how many different ways can we name today's marker in terms of money, decimals, and fractions? Let's start with money. Okay, so we have two dimes. Awesome. Well, what is two dimes worth? You got it. 20 cents. Is there anything else that we can add for our money column? Remember, we're talking about equivalent names. So how else might I say we have 20 cents? Or if you had 20 cents in your pocket, what could you have? Right, so you could have four nickels, okay? You could have 20 pennies, awesome. You could have a dime and two nickels, very good. I'm actually gonna put that dime and two nickels. All right, very good. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the fraction um, section. How would we write this as a fraction? Let me just refresh your memory of how we wrote our one dime as a fraction. So one dime was one tenth of a dollar. So then what might two dimes be? Okay, so one dime is one tenth. So that means I have one tenth, one tenth, which is how many tenths? Good. So we have two tenths of a dollar. Okay, is there any other way I could write a fraction to represent two tenths of a dollar, which is 20 cents? Yeah, two tenths which is 20 cents, and we have 100 pennies in a dollar. So if I have 20 pennies out of the 100 pennies that make a dollar, then what might that fraction look like? You got it, 20 one hundredths, or 20 over 100. I'm wondering if you guys can think of an equivalent fraction for two tenths, or maybe even for 20 hundredths. Good. One fifth. Or, you might think of another? I'll tell you what I'm thinking of. Four twentieths. That's my equivalent fraction. Let's move on to the decimal section. How might I write this as a decimal? Good. I could write it as. 20 hundredths, or I could write it as 2 tenths. Do you remember that from earlier? All right, well, let's look at October 5th. There it is. So now you're going to have to open up your number corner um, workbook to our base 10 mats page, which is on page 14 so that we can color in our base 10 mat to look exactly like the fifth 
marker, which is here again for you, and I'm going to color it in as well. While you're coloring it in, I want you to be thinking about some ways, some different expressions that you could use to name this marker in terms of money, decimals, and fractions. All right, hopefully you colored it in. Be thinking of some ideas. Okay, are you ready? Well, what'd you get? Yeah, so we colored in two of the tenths. Remember last time when I showed you guys, so I can get rid of this and I can circle this, and I said that this was a tenth. We knew it was a tenth because there were 10 of them in this whole mat. Well, I've colored in two of them, so that gives me two tenths. Where would I put two tenths? Money, fractions, or decimals? Fractions, you're right. Very good. Okay, what else might I add? How's it related to money? Hmm. While you guys are thinking, I just wanted to show you this. Here's a tenth, here's another tenth. And since I'm asking you, how is this related to money? What do you see here? Yeah, so we could pretend that it was like a dollar. And here's a tenth, which is 10 cents. And here's a tenth. Do y'all see that? Does it make sense? So if, it, if this whole square was worth a dollar, then that means two rows could be two dimes. So I'm gonna fill that in. So if the square was a dollar, the two rows could be two dimes. You got it. Any other fractions we can add? I know we started with two tenths. So up here we have two tenths and 21 hundredths. Can we put that here? Yeah, it's still 20 of the small boxes, small squares within that larger square. Okay, well, let's write it as a decimal, which should be very easy. I'm gonna write it as two tenths. Here it is. Well, let's look at our next calendar marker. Here's our next calendar marker. Yeah. What fraction's colored in there? Yes, one fifth. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that down. We have one fifth colored in, but the big question here is, well, how is that related to money? Hmm. Awesome, you used what we did up here when we wrote some equivalent fractions. So one fifth was the same thing as two tenths of a dollar. That's absolutely right because one-fifth of a dollar is 20 cents, okay, 20 cent. What about our decimal? That should be easy too. Yeah, so we have 20 cents here, which means we can put 20 hundreds, because we know 20, um, there are 100 pennies in a dollar. Or I could put our two tenths, which means one fifth is equivalent to two tenths. Is that good? Follow? Awesome. Let's go to the last calendar marker for today that we're gonna talk about because today is October the 7th. That looks kind of familiar, right? Because we've seen that on Saturday for the third. Okay, let's fill it in. So how is that related to money? Let's look back up to see what we've done. 
So each square is like a dime because there are 10 of them in the whole rectangle. So that will be 10 times 10, which is 100 cent. So that means since I have two of them colored in, it's like a dime or not like a dime, but it's like two dimes. Make sense? 10 and 10 is 20, right? So then our fraction is two tenths or we just talked about equivalents, which would be one fifth. You got it. And for our decimal, I'm going to write two tenths. Good to go? All right, let's move right into the next part of our number corner, which is to update our race to the millions. You may remember I said one team goes every day. We're not going to talk about it, so I'm going to roll for you really quickly. I'm going to fill it in because it's your turn, but then we're going to move on to our number line. So let's roll. All right, you got a two, and where do you want to put your two? Ten thousands, sure. Let me mark that. So now you have you can't use your ten thousands anymore. So that means you have the number twenty thousand. Awesome. And Ms. Tremel will go tomorrow. Okay, on to our number line. All right, guys, here's our number line. Remember last month we um, focused on multiples of two, multiples of three, and then multiples of six. Do you remember what a multiple is? All right, great. So today, we're going to add multiples of two more numbers to this very same number line. Um, today, we're going to focus only on one of those two, but this month, we're going to add two more multiples. And today, the multiple we're going to focus on is a multiple of four. What is a multiple of four? Okay, will some multiples of four already have been marked, do you think? Well, which ones? Hmm, I guess we're gonna find out shortly. About how many multiples of four are there between zero and 100? Good thinking, probably half as many as multiples of two because four is double, is two doubled. I guess we're going to have to see. So we're going to we're going to count by fours and we're going to use the same count around process that we did back in September. So remember, you say every number and you might whisper it. And then when you get to multiple of four, you shout it out loud. Make sure you're watching. Make sure you're listening um, because you guys remember this month you're going to have an assessment for number corner. And I'm sure some of the questions are going to ask you about multiples and what you've noticed. So make sure you're participating with me. All right, are there any questions before we start? Great, here we go. I'm gonna mark it with a, I believe I'm gonna do a black circle. So let me get ready. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. 16, 17, 18, 20, I wonder. How many multiples of four have we circled so far? Hmm. Ah, 10 multiples of 40. Do you recognize that as 10 times four? Sure hope so. Let's keep going. Ready? Okay, whispering. And then we call out our multiples of four. 
44. 48. 52. 56. 60. Are you still with me? Okay. 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 72, 76, 80, 84, keep going, we're almost there. 88, 92, 96, 100. We made it all the way to 100, and 100 is a multiple of four. Awesome. So, hmm, just look at this number line. See if you can make some observations about multiples of four. Are you seeing any relationships with the multiples? So let me just remind you, multiples of two in blue, multiples of three in green, and multiples of Six have red box. Add that up here so you guys can see and remember what's happening with our multiples. Okay, so do you see relationships? Aha, uh -huh. do you notice that every multiple of four is also a multiple of two? Did you see that? Yeah, there are twice as many multiples of two than there are multiples of four. So look, in between a multiple of four, there are going to be two multiples of two. Do you see that? That's pretty cool. Okay, well, now I want you to think, what isn't happening on this number line? Well, what is happening? Yeah, okay, so multiples of four are all some multiples of four are also multiples of three, right? Because we see the green dot. Yeah, some multiples of three are multiples of four. That's interesting. Hmm. Anything else? Well, you guys did a great job thinking through those multiples, um, updating our calendar grid, observation sheet, and for our race to the millions. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. If you haven't already, make sure you have finished your word problem because tomorrow we're going to be talking through some of the strategies that you could have used to solve it. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.